Okay, so now that I've got everything connected up and uh, we have power on and our counter simulator is working, which is really all we're controlling this on is uh, the control of this right now is based on the counter uh, counts, simulates feet ascending and descending the well bore and um, starts and stops based on the, the user maximum depth input which is pretty much how we controlled the uh, the first uh, retrofit we did back in July of 2017 in uh, Morse Oklahoma and we ran that for about a month straight and everybody monitored that over remote access similar to this but not uh, not quite the same not as good I'll say that so I've, I've like to say I've made some improvements since then. So what I'm using, uh, well the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to get on my laptop here and, and I'm going to open up the uh, which you'll be doing on your mobile phone by the way. I'm going to open up the remote utilities viewer and uh, I can see that the device is showing up online so I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to select full control. You don't have to do this on your phone by the way when you download that app it uh, it's automatically logs in with full control and it, give it a minute to come up it should bring the screen up here that's starting to come in it's a little delayed because it is over the IT okay so there's the uh, there's the user interface screen so the only thing I have on here right now is to uh, you can enter your maximum depth and uh, by typing you have to pull up your keyboard on your smartphone to type that in. So you put your maximum depth in. I think I've got it set for 800 feet right now. Uh, the unit counter on the PLC is showing that it uh, was stopped at 160 feet. And of course load percentage, motor RPM, and amps current are zero right now. So technically I'm logged in over the IoT right now. And these are a little bit delayed. You will have a three or four second delay sometimes, depending on the quality of the connection. So what I'm going to do right now is go over here and put the uh, the main controller into run, uh, so that it's run active. And of course, uh, when this is left out into the field on its own, it'll be in run all the time. So we just have to be able to start and stop the unit uh, via the remote access screen, and there'll be multiple menus and screens to access for data and operation monitoring only. Uh, this screen is for test purposes only. So you guys can play around with it. Obviously you're not going to hurt anything. The motor's just sitting on the bench and you can I don't think you can run it above uh, 20 hertz. So it's all uh, it's all pretty safe from what I can tell. I've left it running on its own for uh, two days now just to make sure it would run and not stop. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start and uh, it is starting. You can see the, uh, the it's in forward right now because the counter is actually counting down. When it's going down the well bore I have it count feet in the upward direction. Now if I were to stop it right now which you can do at any time and if I come over here and put it in reverse and then start it again you'll notice the counter counts down and I've got the PLC program to stop the unit when it reaches um, zero and then it restarts itself puts itself back and forward and ascends back down the well bore in theory the other thing I have it doing is as it's coming up the well bore uh, I am decreasing uh, the Hertz by 0.1 amps every 12 counts. So you'll see that the uh, amperage, or not the amperage, the, the frequency in Hertz uh, depreciating as we're coming up the well bore by 0.1. And this will be a user set value based on the depth. Uh, the, the main reason for this, now see we just got to zero so it stopped. There's about a five second delay, it goes back and forward and it's going to head back down the wellbore. 
And this entire screen was developed with uh, Visual Studio. And uh, I'm working on some login screens and things like that right now with that. Um, and this is the Community Edition. I mean, really, to do some serious development with this, one would want to purchase the at least the Enterprise Visual Studio, Studio preferably purchase the professional version, uh, so that we can output uh, our own apps. So that's my advanced HMI. Advanced HMI is a uh, a free development software. And that's some of the form codes, and then I can go to design view form. This is actually a uh, a login form I was working on earlier. So basically, if I run this, you can see that uh, essentially you have to log into the HMI screen is what it has to happen. So I think I have the password is ARC2400 for ARPA 2400, and. Uh, then I use the PIN number for the password, 4979, and then click Login. And if it's incorrect, of course I got a mess message box popping up. I don't know what I did incorrect. I guess it is case sensitive, so uh, it's lowercase ARC. Let's try to change that. RC. And I know the PIN's right, so I'm going to hit that again here. Yeah, there we go. And of course it just went to another form. Um, anyway, that's uh, just things that uh, have to be developed. And I've got a hidden exit button right there that if I hover over it, I back out and go back into Visual Studio. And I can access my, my code and all that again. So that's what I'm using for the HMI screen. That... Uh, that you'll be viewing over the remote access utility and it should look like that when you sign into it let me know how it goes I'll be sending out the uh, the IOT ID and the uh, password here shortly so that completes the uh, the update for the controls video